What is up? Welcome back to my garage and part two of this clip point hunting knife as a Christmas present for my grandpa. Um, <laughs> it's way past Christmas at this point, but still a Christmas present. If you didn't see the first part, I'll leave a link somewhere or down in the description if I can't get one of them card things to work. Just a little heads up, I had some problems with the recording. My microphone is a POS and um, uh, I'm having to re-record some stuff. So at some points you'll see this thing wrapped up because you're not going to see it till the end unless you want to be a cheater and fast forward. But I got tired of messing with the sound and ordered a really expensive microphone. So hopefully after this video or the next or the next, whenever it gets here, uh, sound won't be an issue anymore. But without further ado, let's finish building this knife. Okay, so next step is to shape all this handle material and get it fitting on the knife. Um, you know, the front bolsters, back bolsters, and then you know the scales. Um, this is definitely going to be the most complex. I've never done back bolsters, never really put like a guard on a knife. So, you know, I got to fit these and shape these and uh, cut the wood right so that these strips line up in the middle and then get the bolsters. I'm a little nervous I'm going to screw it up, but I've kind of been that way with most of the knives I've been working on. So, figure it out as we go.
Okay, so we got the front bolsters uh, glued on after that last section, and um, I had a lot of trouble because I kind of messed that up. I messed it up for two reasons. First of all, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's some spaces in both these pinholes, and that's because when I was drilling them, I got some chatter. I don't know if you noticed that, uh, but you know, it made it so they didn't fit tight. Um, and then also, if you look back here, these back bolsters aren't lined up perfectly. And that caused everything to basically cascade out of line down the knife and cost me endless hours of work to try to get everything lined up after this. Uh, I basically took pieces of sandpaper and put them in between each section of the knife like the bolsters and the scales and the front bolsters and sat there and sand them against each other to try to form fit them to each other. <laughs> I think it worked. Everything is tight and mostly aligned except for these front bolsters. But, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go get the rest of this handle material fitted up and glued to the tang. Okay, we got the rest of the handle material glued up to the tang. We got the scales, we got the back bolsters all attached. Everything's ready to be shaped. Uh, and I did end up using only one of these scale blocks. I ended up ripping it down and using it for both sides of the scales. And uh, since I'm a future wonder, uh, I know it worked out pretty well. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and jump into shaping this handle. And when I get back, no more paper towel.
Okay, so I got the handle profiled this way and this way. Uh, you can see going for a nice hourglass shape here. And uh, feels real good in the hand. I don't trust myself with the belt sander to get super close to the lines I want. So I'm gonna hit it with some files, uh, knock down these edges once I've refined the, sh the shape, round everything off, sand it up to like thousand grit, make it all nice and shiny. Uh, so I'm gonna put on some music and get to shaping. Hey, thanks a lot for coming along with me on this knife build. Uh, if you like this one, you know, like, subscribe, comment, share, any sort of hints and tips you have. I'm always open ears. Uh, you know, so go ahead and comment in the down there area. I really like this knife. It's definitely like my best knife ever. Um, you know, I put a lot of work in this so my, uh, you know, so my grandpa would have a good uh, Christmas present. It means a lot to me and uh, I hope it shows. A few things you might have noticed is I, uh, I taped off a lot of different sections because when I was sanding it, I would get uh, this ebony wood dust in the grain of this uh, yellow heart, yellow tail, whatever it's called. Also, I'd get metal grain in here. So anytime I'd sand here to here or like ebony to yellow or steel to yellow, I would get just bad streaks of stuff. And I, I don't know if you can tell, but there is, but there's some dark streaks back here, some dark streaks up here. It's hard to tell on video, but you can see it pretty clear in person. Um, and I just really wanted the yellow to pop. Um, it does mostly, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, but that's why I started masking everything off uh, into sanding. And I masked everything off. It took forever. <clears throat> also at the end there, I used a combination of boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits. I was listening to Fedor Knives. Uh, follow him on Instagram. You should go check him out. He's awesome. Um, but he was talking about for lighter woods like this yellow heart um, uh, mineral spirits and some sort of oil. If you soak it in, it helps seep it into the woods, uh, kind of stabilize it. 
Um, it gives it a little bit darker hue. I did five coats of that, and then I did paste wax over the whole knife, and then kind of you know wiped it off and shined it and buffed it again. Um, so yeah, I just need to make a sheath for this, and then uh, I'll be sending it off to my grandpa. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Peace.